Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Now I've been spending the last week with the 2023 Ford F-250 Super Duty. This one, as you're looking at it, is an XLT model. We've got the full crew cab, the six and three quarter foot bed. The, it, the way you're looking at it, $70,000, but if you do without some of the options like the sport appearance package, the tonneau cover, and the sunroof, you can be much more reasonable, kind of mid 60s or so. And by the time you factor in some sort of rebates and you work with your dealer and stuff, I bet you could be walking out of the door for about $60,000 for this truck. And for everything that this truck is capable of, that's really not too bad of a price. I see a lot of commentary out there online about, oh, new trucks have become so expensive. And that is true. Trucks have become expensive, especially if you pony up and you get something like a Lariat or even more so one of the Platinums or Limiteds like that. However, I currently own a 1999 Ford F350 Lariat with the 7.3 liter Power Stroke diesel motor. And I've done a lot of comparison of that truck's MSRP adjusted for inflation compared to the new trucks and my truck pretty fully loaded out it's a lariat model you got leather and and obviously the the 7.3 power stroke which is the top level diesel engine at that time that truck comes out to about sixty eight thousand dollars after adjusting for inflation but when you consider that this gasoline motor as we're looking at it is nearly as efficient as my diesel and makes uh nearly the same amount of torque not exactly the same amount of torque but pretty close 430 to 500 but much much more horsepower and it's only running uh, gasoline so it's cheaper to fuel and it's coming with so many more technology features and safety features yeah it's uh it's really not all that much more crazy expensive so yeah if you were to build out an apples to apples truck 20 years ago compared to what you could get now yeah, maybe the sticker price, even after adjusting for inflation, is going to be a little bit more. But when you're reasonable with options and you recognize all the, the uh, niceties and nice to have things you're getting with a new truck and, and tack on some sort of efficiency numbers, it's really not as bad as you might think. So a lot of the reviews we do are kind of should you buy this or should you not sort of reviews. And that's a little bit tougher to do with a truck like this because realistically, if you're buying a heavy duty truck, you probably have specific needs. And that's the beauty of the HD truck market here in America in 2024, is you can tailor these vehicles so specifically to what you want. You pull up a build configurator for, I mean, even a, a light duty truck, but especially a heavy duty truck like this, and there's so many little tiny tweaks you can make to the configurator to get the truck exactly how you want it. So I'm not gonna necessarily tell you you should or should not go out and buy the F-250 versus the, the 2500 from Chevy or GMC or the Dodge. And part of that is because the only ones that I've driven from those manufacturers are entirely different specs. I've spent a lot of time in a Duramax 2500 series uh, high country Chevrolet, so obviously that's gonna be pretty different. I've spent time in a Rebel 2500 Ram, so obviously that's gonna be very different. But we can at least go for a drive and I can show you some of the features of this truck and, and sort of help show you what Ford's bringing to the table with this newest generation of Super Duty. I should also point out we have a few other videos like a fuel economy test on this 7.3 Godzilla gasoline motor. We've got an infotainment breakdown. We've got a sound system test. All that will be linked below. We're seeing with the new truck, we've got a sidestep finally. That's nice because for a long time, Ford has had this step in the middle that you can option out and pop open. And yeah, if you're getting, if you're doing a lot of loading in and out of the truck bed, this is nice to have. You can pull up this handle here as well. It makes it really easy. We joke around, call it the old man step, but realistically it is very nice to get in and out of these very tall truck beds. But a lot of times you just need to get up one time into the back of your truck. It's not worth taking all the time to pull that out. So it's nice that Ford finally has a step right here and a little hand spot. You put your fingers in, lift yourself up. If we open this tunnel cover that's supplied by Ford, a little uh, fidgety, but once you open it, tracks all the way in like so. You can see easy to step on up there. This truck is equipped with the Pro Power on board that gives us a uh, two kilowatt max, 20 amp wall style outlet in there. You can get uh, even more power, I believe, depending on how you configure it. One thing that has certainly inflated with trucks over the years is the height of them. It's virtually impossible for me at five foot 10 to reach into the back of this truck without climbing onto some sort of step. Whereas my old truck from 1999, it's very easy to reach into the back of the bed. And 
I don't know why trucks have to become so large. There's plenty of people who don't need the height of these trucks. Ford also has given you a step on the side right here, so it's easier to get on up and reach into the top of the bed, which is good. No big surprises in the back of the Super Duty. You can fold the seats up, do some sort of storage optioning down there. The seats provide a ton of room, good amount of comfort. You can do rear-facing car seats back here with latch anchors. You can have adults fit. You got two USB-C ports, a wall-style outlet, and a 12 volt, some air vents, cup holders, that panel roof up there. No big surprises, it's a decent place to be in the back of this crew cab. Let's take a quick look at the motor. Like I said, this is the 7.3 gas motor, came out a few years ago, and I gotta say, it's been nice to have it around. It's, it's a strong performer, 480 some horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, and looking like it's still pretty easy to work on in there, despite being such a large engine. You can see where the alternator is, you can see all the coil packs should be fairly easy to get on up in there although obviously you're going to need some sort of stool and we've got a good amount of radiator intrusion might have to move some things around to get to the belt 18 inch wheels on this truck we've got uh, what are we bridgestone duelers yep dueler all terrains on this one like i said xlt model this does have the xlt premium package though and we're getting the eight speaker bno sound system got a link to that below we've got power extending trailer mirrors that's nice to have if you're doing some towing and then you get back in you realize your mirrors are still out you don't have to get around the truck and close them both by hand not fully power adjustable seats but we've got 10-way adjustment for the power down there and then a manual recline that's a bit frustrating however i don't mind the cloth the cloth seats are comfortable they're cool and if they're too cool too cool you can heat them up with the power heat from the xlt premium package Bringing it to life, we see our two screens in front of us, given all the information we could possibly want. Love having physical adjustments for the HVAC and for the audio. Got a physical trailer brake controller built right in and the Pro Trailer Backup Assist, something that I actually do really appreciate out of Ford trucks. If you set uh, the proper stickers up on your trailer, you can back the trailer up so easily. Really like to have that. Standard on the fly four wheel drive adjustment, just two high, four high and four low. This one's got the 373 locking rear diff, electronically locking, that's definitely good to have if you plan on doing a little bit of off-roading. No complaints from the interior layout. This one does have an optional safe, but this would just be a big old center console if it weren't there. And we've got these center areas. No wireless charging in this one though, that's a bit frustrating because we do have the wireless phone projection. So your phone battery will be sucked down if you don't have some sort of cable. If you need up extra cup holders, slide this over and then you got a four cup holder set up that's good to have Alyssa and i were talking about that and there's often times that you're going on some sort of road trip maybe you get up early in the morning you got your coffee for the morning so that's taking up one cup holder then you've got a water bottle going that takes up two and then you pick something up from fast food and then you got three maybe even four different cups going and that's just for one person so you throw two people in the truck and all of a sudden you're taking advantage of every single cup holder you got around the cabin What's remarkable about the Super Duty is how easily it drives. The steering is light, the steering wheel is large, but other than that, this really doesn't feel like a heavy duty truck from the ease of driving perspective. However, the ride is remarkably firm in here, and I don't know exactly why that is. I mean, obviously you don't need to explain to me that a heavy duty truck needs to have heavy duty suspension. Obviously you need to be able to pull all the weight that this truck is capable of. And I remember off the top of my head, this one we're driving is about 17,000 pounds of towing capacity, both fifth wheel gooseneck and from the hitch. But I've ridden in other heavy duty trucks, many other heavy duty trucks, and they don't ride this stiff. I would think we've got some sort of off-road package or something making this so, so darn stiff in the back, but it really bounces around and and i tried taking it down a fairly potholed dirt road section i was so uncomfortable being jostled around so aggressively i had to turn around and come back it was really bad i did not experience that from the chevy or the dodge that i drove but again those were more expensive more luxury focused models so i can't exactly give you an apples to apples comparison on that the 7.3 liter motor is paired up to a 10 speed automatic transmission something ford has been attempting to dial in over a decade it's fine. I don't love how often the transmission's having to shift. You don't feel it much. It's a fairly smooth transaction, but if you're going up a hill or you're accelerating, you're just you're kind of noticing how often things are shifting. But I'm reminded if you're in something like a semi-truck, that thing's shifting all the time in order to keep 
power band right in spot or maybe you're trying to keep efficiency higher. So I understand why the 10-speed transmission makes sense. It's just tough coming out of something like my four-speed automatic in my Super Duty, my old one. It, it's tough to just constantly be hearing. I mean, right already we're in seventh gear, just taking off from that light. Now we're in eighth, now ninth, and then it'll be in tenth right about. Yep, there we go, tenth gear. So it gets up there quick. I'm sure it helps with efficiency, but it doesn't matter how you cut it. This is not a very efficient truck. I've been driving it around for hundreds of miles. We did our fuel economy test, but since I reset it 115 miles ago, I've been averaging 11.7 MPG. And that hasn't been driving it crazy. That's just been a mixture of highway, city, yeah, getting up to the speed limit and then coming back down. But I'm not saying I expect more from such a powerful heavy duty truck, but I just want you to keep that in mind that despite Having 10 gears is not a crazy efficient truck. I will say the throttle tuning is remarkably strong in this car. I don't like how Ford tuned it. We do have a few different drive modes, and if you drive around in normal, which I've been spending most of my time in eco to try to tone down the throttle response, but if you drive around in normal, it's a very aggressive throttle tuning. And I think they did that in order to make the truck feel more peppy and more aggressive so that people come in for a test drive and they go, oh wow, this thing's got a lot of get up and go. But really what it is is just very aggressive throttle tuning. The engine's getting a lot of fuel with just a little bit of acceleration, accelerator pressure. And that results in a, a jumpy, uh, kind of overly eager driving experience when you're driving this thing around. So again, I've usually been just driving around in eco. It helps the truck feel a little more linear and more normal. But I will say it does add to the ability of being able to drive this truck like it's not such a large, heavy duty, capable sort of vehicle. The mixture of the potent engine, the well-designed mirrors, the light steering, the competent brakes, I can drive this truck around like it's a more uh, light on its feet sort of machine. I don't feel uh, weighed down by this truck the way I do in something like my old 7.3 Power Stroke. That truck, when I get in, I'm, I, I've known, knowing that I'm committing myself to just a casual drive. I'm always letting people in, I'm always taking turns really slow. This truck, I, I can drive it around very lightheartedly. I will also say, not many nitpicks or complaints from my end. It's it's a straightforward vehicle, and I suppose the, the biggest frustration I have had driving it around is a wandering on the highway. You're always having to be cognizant of uh, kind of how you're driving and staying from within the lanes because it is easy for this truck to wander away. Other than that, I mean, the interior layout's good. Comfort's been good. I don't have a problem with any of the interior materials. We've got a nice leather for the center armrest here and leather here. Again, I, I'm big on the things that you touch regularly should feel nice. And aside from the rubber steering wheel on this XLT model, everything else you, you use regularly feels nice. The door handles feel good. Stop start feels good. Shifter is nice being a column shifter. Uh, very few kind of uh, growing complaints for me as I spent time in the truck. This is a fine place to be. It is tough that the competition is so tough. That's again why I'm not really telling you exactly you should buy this over one of the competitors because yeah, one, I'm not super well versed in the heavy duty truck game and two, they all make pretty competent products at this point. I did really like spending time in the 2500 high country we had from Chevy. I will say that the technology suite in that truck is vastly superior. I much prefer the infotainment in the new Chevys. And I do prefer the interior layout and general feel of the Rams. But from, a, from an ease of use and a reliability standpoint, I do think my money would probably be going toward the Ford. I will make the observation that the ease of use of this truck does take a little bit away from the uh, kind of deep pleasure that some people get from driving a heavy duty truck. Like when I get in my 99 Power Stroke, yeah, it's it's got heavy steering and it's cumbersome and, and it's loud and, and kind of takes its time getting up to speed. But I, I sort of revel in that uh, industrial feel and feeling like I really am driving a serious piece of machinery. This truck, because it is fairly refined, you do miss out on that a little bit. You do kind of just feel like you're driving uh, 
uh, any old standard passenger car. Not all the way. I mean, obviously the lifted height helps and the, the big imposing hood and uh, the, the sound from the 7.3 V8. It all helps, but there are other heavy-duty trucks that do feel a little bit more gruff. Oh my gosh, but that ride definitely does bring you back to reality. <laughs> All right, so after a week with the truck, where does it rank on the Daily Motor leaderboard? Let's take a look. Top of the leaderboard right now is made up by the Kia EV9, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and the Toyota Prius. This is where this truck is going. It's going to be ranked number six, right below the Hyundai Tucson and right above the Mercedes GLS 450. And that's mostly because this is a fairly subjective list and I was looking forward to driving this truck and there's really nothing about it that's uh, blown me away after spending time with it. That list is made up of, of vehicles near the top that as I spent more and more time with the truck, I was just really compelled, or I should say more and more time with the cars, I was really compelled by the packaging, by everything it offered, and uh, I would want to rush out and buy one. and. After driving this, all I would want to do is rush out and buy a, a first-gen Super Duty. <laughs> it just makes me like my older truck more. I'm, I'm not super enamored by the styling. I think that big air dam down there is ugly. I don't know. I just, I see trouble. But, but it is a competent truck, and I do think Ford did a lot right with it. And if you need an HD truck, I think this one's going to serve you well. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Super Duty, check the link below. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, heavy-duty truck on. Mm -hmm.